In this video we're taking an in-depth view at all the menus of the D7W. This is their new layout. This is the flagship of the D7W family, the highest spec unit that you can get. Looking at it, we have on the left corner the support link if we click on it. We will have, if we click on it, our account information. We have on the diagnostic side of things. So when you have a vehicle that you are diagnosing, easiest way to go and do perform the diagnostic, diagnostic menu. Here you can go and use the automatic VIN decoder. You will select European market, American vehicles, Asia, and as you can see, the coverage is quite extensive. Vehicles that have OBD2 ports covered from 1996 all the way to 2024. China as a market, Australia, and we go back to our European vehicles. I'm going to give you an example. If I click on BMW, it is searching for connectivity to this dongle. It doesn't have it, so I'm expecting an error message. OK to this and we go back to the menu. This unit has a better user interface. It is taking away part of the things that in the past were easily available all the time on the screen. But we still have access to the lower ribbon. So if we pull down on it or up, we can go and see different, um, different things of access on our tablet. Uh, the diagnostic software logo is this one. You can enable screen recording and other things from the same menu. Get accustomed with the back arrow and get accustomed with the volume up and down because you can control them from there also. Other button, auto scan. This is still a function part of the diagnostic bit. It is trying to receive the VIN number from the vehicle to select automatically what type of vehicle and what type of software it should try to, to use. Special functions. The majority of you, I know, are here just for the special functions. Key programming, instrument cluster. I would say that that bit with the instrument cluster is the mileage correction part. Power balance, seat calibration, TPMS reset, EEPROM functionality. Here is where you are able to connect an additional EEPROM reader, but sometimes even the communication with the instrument clusters is done with that type of function. Language change, transport mode, ECU control, unit reset. You will see that many of these functions might be specific to certain vehicles. So just because you have it over here doesn't mean that it will work on the vehicle. Be mindful of that. These units are quite capable. However, there will be moments where they're just not compatible with that uh, vehicle that you're working either with the specific generation of that vehicle so it might work on a different generation take it with a pinch of salt don't obsess too much of having the function and actually being able to perform it on the vehicle bms resets throttle calibrations i would expect rain sensors air to fuel ratio hybrid vehicle battery reset gearbox matches diesel particulate filter or gasoline particulate filter reset and functions re regarding that. ABS bleeding, speed limiter, gearbox learning, clutch adaptation, start stop resets, FRM reset for the guys that are having BMWs, steering angle resets, EGR learned position, oil resets, so part of the servicing resets, electronic parking brake functions, engaging, disengaging the electronic parking brake, mm -hmm. AC relearn, things regarding the headlights, I'm expecting the calibration of up, down, left and right, SRS, supplementary restraint systems, if I rem remember correctly, so airbag related, window in initialization, calibration of your stoppers for the windows. A quick reminder, because I always forget, in the links you have access to our diagnostic tool database, a place where you can compare tools side by side in a much easier to see format. Take a look at it and see if you enjoy using that tool. Back to the video. VGT relearn, variable something, turbine or pumps, something along those lines. Injector coding, electric pump activation, suspension things, 
something with airbag reset so SRT might be different tire refit the software on the X tools especially when you're trying to connect it with the wireless dongles the special functions they don't allow you to actually read the description unless you have this one connected to the vehicle on the ones that don't have the cable I've noticed that I'm able to access those functions and read about them a little bit more when you're performing the diagnostics you are usually able to perform or to output a report and your reports will be in this area of the menu let's see these are some reports that I've done in a very interesting format because they're not heavily branded launch hotel and other manufacturer top down as a example they will put their branding on your diagnostic reports this one is a more clean way of doing it and it is in my opinion a better way of doing it you are also having the capability nope don't count, don't delete it of actually going in and starting to change some of the stuff the annoying bit about the back not being available so move from the bottom back to this and I'm able to go in and do some changes that might be useful when I'm um, sending this report to a customer or just archiving it for my use a little bit later here we also have data playback for when we do data logging more about data logging in the D7W videos those ones might be very useful data view so if you're recording some information and you're not outputting it as a CSV file you will have some information additional that you can use over here and by the looks of it the unit decided to crash in this menu one of those unpredictable things but should that happen okay it gives me no 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 wait so I think that the file was too big because when I hit the back when the app was starting to stop eventually it managed to load that content so it might be the fact that I recorded too much data and it's really struggling to to generate the data view we give it the benefit of the doubt but should something similar like this happen you always have the option of swiping from the bottom let's see doesn't want to okay so it, strange usually I feel like my you know something strange was happening because usually you can pull from the bottom the overall menu and you can uh, close the app if there is an issue okay back to the other things the update menu easy operation you just click and it does all the other stuff as the example let's see if we allow it to update it is connecting to the Wi-Fi and automatically installing everything this is one of the things that you are going to notice about the XTool products their software works faster than things like launch and top tone they still have things to improve but it feels like it is faster than the other stuff we go to the more menu here is where we are having profile vci management which is this and endoscope let's go on profile the information regarding workshop or our subscription so my unit is able to receive the updates until 2026 VCI management with this functionality you're able to update the software that is running on this one and they are also giving you insight if you don't have a vehicle they are telling you to power this one so that you do a self test endoscope is when we add the additional camera quite an interesting thing to use in the beginning you will not think that you are going to use it but when you have a vehicle and you want to see things that people don't really look at as an example the valves this unit and that camera 
was useful. Sometimes if you have noise coming from strange places, you might be able to put the endoscope camera and see if you have loose bolts or other things in really tight places. Remote control. I was telling you in a previous video that this unit will allow someone that connects remotely with TeamViewer to help you when you do your diagnostic scans. That is the bit of the functionality that you will need to use. You give them the ID and they are able to connect and help you with your diagnostics. Settings. Let's see what we have in settings. Languages. English, Chinese, different types of Chinese, German, a language that I don't know, Spanish, some Arabic language maybe, French, Bahasa, Italiano, Italian, or other types of dialects, maybe Vietnamese, some strange characters, Dutch, Norks, Polish, Portuguese, maybe a Russian, another Turkish, Suomi, Vietnam, and Hungarian as languages. In the menu for the settings, you can select the units that you want to see, metric, imperial, US, USB settings. Here, by playing around with these settings, you will be able to allow this unit to be seen when you're working with it on a computer. Maybe you are adding some additional software or exporting your um, reports and this is where this helps. Sound and display, you adjust the brightness, you adjust volume about, about the device. This is the app version. So if I click on it, it tries to connect to, to see if there is a different option available. And now it's taking me to the Android menu where I can play around with uh, the other settings. I go back because I want to see what other things we have available in the menu of this unit. So let's see on the X tool. By the looks of it, it is taking us to their website. I'm clicking on that one so that I'm able to see multiple things at once. And we are back in the main unit. Shortcuts and things to, to consider by comparison with the D7, the normal one. They have introduced the battery level as a fixed value or it is always on the screen. You have it on the right side. You have the connection with the VCI. Right now it's not connected. On the left side in this area we have the fact that the unit is connected to the internet. One of the other things that I would like to show you guys, I've installed a software and that is the example of when things are starting to, um, to max out and the unit is a little bit becoming slower. I've installed a software that does CPU monitoring and if you run it on this unit, you will see that for some reason the CPU maxes out, even in normal use without scanning something, the CPU gets to, to the maximum value. A thing that if I compare, if I'm comparing it with the D7, on the D7 it's sitting at 60-70%, so on the normal D7s this behavior is not happening. Look into it more if you actually need to do it. I'm considering that this is due to the new graphic interface something is happening regarding that it is taking more resources due to it being overlaid or the graphic being more complicated and giving you a nicer user interface take this type of information and maybe use it in your decision making my personal view the d7 runs with less resource use than the d7s and the d7w other things to mention and other things to notice is the fact that the battery, even if you have the screen in the off mode, will deplete. In my testing at two o'clock, the battery was 100%. By nine o'clock, it dropped to 61% without me actually using the tablet. 
and with the screen being off. This behavior is something that you will not see on tools like the launch tools. Those ones, if you don't use the screen and you power it off, you leave it at 75%, maybe you find it at 74 later in the day. This behavior with the CPU might be the one that drains the battery quite aggressively. Now, I hope that this video gave you a bit of an overview of what to expect from these diagnostic tools. Even with these small little mm -hmm. things that still need um, a bit of work, they, these tools are very capable and they will help you in your diagnostic endeavor.